Hello everybody. Hope you're doing great and already for some volcano updates. So, it's been two days since an eruption began here on the Reykjanes Peninsula in Iceland, just 1.5 kilometers northeast of the eruption site we had last year. Now we have a lot of new information and data on the eruption, which I'll go over in this video. This eruption is much larger than the first eruption, but its size has fluctuated a bit since it started, but this development is normal and is to be expected. Like the last eruption, its size points toward a long-lasting eruption, which could go on for months, with the last eruption lasting six months. Gas will now be flying around the vicinity of the volcano, and will reach certain towns when the wind blows in a certain direction. Our rescue teams have marked the shortest and easiest path to the eruption site, and it's seven kilometers. But it's in no way an easy walk, and the trip will normally take five to six hours. And since I've been there myself, I can confirm this. If you're on your way to Iceland and want to make the hike, here's where you'd park, and I recommend taking the path marked on screen, as it's the shortest and provides the best views. The views are insane. If you see cars parked on the side of the roads, don't copy, as it's not allowed. It disrupts traffic, which can lead to all sorts of problems, especially if there's an emergency. Those are all the news I got for you today. Now let's check out some of the juicy data we've received. This eruption is now two days old, and its exact location compared to the previous eruption is marked on this map here. So it's just right next door. When our experts measured this lava flow, it clocked in at 32 cubic meters a second, which is way more than the previous eruption ever reached. But it topped out at 16 cubic meters per second, but it averaged 8 cubic meters. So this eruption started off four times as powerful, but it has cut down its power and is now emitting 18 cubic meters per second, which is still more than the previous eruption's top. The fissure that originally opened has also shrunk in from 300 meters to 100 meters, which is also something we saw in the previous eruption, so it's likely we'll see one main crater form in the future. The lava is filling up the valley which the eruption began in fast, and is already flowing out of it to the south. And as of now, the area covered should roughly look like this. On the topic of the lava, our experts have also taken samples of the lava and carried out a chemical analysis which revealed its composition. It revealed that it's very similar to the lava of the first eruption in 2021. Very low in silica contents and has the high temperatures of 1190 to 1200 degrees Celsius. So this all tells us that the magma feeding the eruption comes straight from the mantle, like last time and hasn't sat in an existing magma chamber for a long time before the eruption. This also means that this eruption has a high chance of lasting for a long time, since it's literally being fed from the metal. Gas is also being emitted from the eruption, and it gets carried by the wind. Sometimes the wind will carry gases over towns, and close attention will be paid to gas levels. Our meteorology office website has a gas forecast, which is very handy, and it shows where gas pollution will reach with a 48-hour notice. Our experts will be providing us with new data daily, so it's going to be fun watching this eruption evolve in the next couple of months. Then there's the mysterious Mars incident that some of you that pay close attention to the live streams might be familiar with. Smoke was spotted on Tuesday, August the 2nd, at 19.30 p.m., which caused a lot of excitement as people thought the eruption had started, as it sure looked like it. I even flew my drone over there at around 23 p.m., so just seven hours before the actual eruption began, and I just saw a circle of burning moss. This phenomenon has still not been explained, but its sudden appearance just prior to the eruption is very strange. I walked by the site on my way to the eruption site and took a good look and it literally was just moss on fire. The ground wasn't even warm in the slightest. Maybe there are some existing fissures there that gas is escaping through due to the magma close by, but that doesn't explain how it lit on fire. It was sort of a decoy eruption thrown just a few hours before the actual eruption, which is super weird. For the sake of this video's length, I'll save the speculations and prediction section for the next video as there was a lot to talk about in this first update of the eruption. But definitely don't hold on to any speculations or predictions you guys may have. I'd, and probably a lot of other people, would love to read them. 
I just want to thank everyone who made it here. Definitely leave any speculations and questions in the comments. It's always fun to read them. Other than that, I just hope you enjoyed. I also hope to see most of you in the next video and thanks for watching.